Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video. Now today we've got something kind of interesting for you, or I hope it is. Uh, it's actually a car parts exposition or expo that I've come to here in Moscow now. I'm not going to focus too much on the car parts. I'm going to check out this car right behind me here. Now I've actually come here to MIMS Automobility Moscow. Here's my little ID to get in. Travelling with Russell, yes. I'm here in Moscow and we're going to check out this car right behind me. Now this Auto Parts Expo is kind of interesting because of course right now, six months into sanctions in Russia, Russia is trying to find new avenues for parts, for engines, for anything to do with cars, trucks, buses. And the whole reason I just showed you the Iran logo there is right here on the right hand side is an Iranian car manufacturer called Eco right here. Check this out, Eco. Now these guys actually produce a lot of car parts, a lot of uh, engine parts that they use for uh, cars that they manufacture in Iran. They also export the parts worldwide for other manufacturers. But what's kind of interesting is right up here is this car just off in the distance. There's a few people kind of looking at it now, but we're going to check it out a bit closer. So the car we're looking at here is called the Eco Tara. It's a six speed, 1.6 litre sedan car, basically, as we can see. Now this isn't in current production and available here in Russia, but they brought one car over to basically show what the future in Russia could possibly look like in the car markets. Now check out the logo right here. This is the symbol of Eco right here. The I guess it's a stallion. I guess it's probably the best way I can describe it, but check this out. Made in Iran. Now, some people are kind of going to go, that's very strange. Most cars are made in China, in Taiwan, in Korea, but other countries in the world make cars. So let's have a look a little bit closer. So just looking around the car a little bit more, it's very interesting. The uh, the look of it, the style, the color. I mean, this could be any sedan car in the world, right? I mean, it kind of has the look of a few different models. They say it looks like a Lada. They say it looks like a Renault. Um, I mean, for me, a car's a car. I mean, I have a Hyundai Getz in Australia, so I'm not really a car guy as such, but you know, I think I kind of like this black color. I wonder what other colors are available. I guess you can kind of choose that at the point that you can buy them. And this is the only one in Russia. They brought this car specially for the car show. And then literally today is the last day. They're going to put it in a, in a, on the back of a truck essentially and drive it back to Iran. And then have a look from the back here. It's got that kind of Jaguar look to it. I mean, again, not being a car guy, I guess I'm kind of lost with how to describe it, but it's kind of got that uh, Tesla look, it's got that Jaguar look. Um, there's all sorts of kind of things coming to mind when I'm looking at it and talking about it. So, what does everybody else think? And then this actually is a six speed automatic. It does come in manual or automatic, but this one is the automatic model. It's got the sat nav right there. Everything you need electric seats, electric windows. There's no kind of compromise on the manufacturing and the quality. You know, a lot of people are kind of in social media at the moment, they're talking about this, oh, it's missing this, it's missing that. It's not, everything is there. Now the staff that are here that are talking about the car and explaining it to everybody said that over 90% of the parts and components made up for the car are actually from Iran, so there's very few imported parts on the whole car, which is very interesting. I mean, I look at Australian cars, the fact that there's very little manufacturing of parts to make a car, but to have over 90% of the parts from inside the country, I think that's a big feat for the country. Just walking around, it's very interesting. Everyone's sort of curious about it. They're checking it out. They're, you know, kind of going through it like fine tooth comb. You know, um, 
I mean, again, for me, a car's a car, but I guess if you're a car guy or girl, maybe you have different opinions about it and, you know what I mean? For me, I think for them to produce a car, manufacture it in the country, then find an avenue to export, I think that's a great thing for the company. They've got a very big display and setup here showing mostly uh, all of the other parts that they manufacture here. They've got some uh, interesting kind of uh, displays, all the different components that make up this car and other cars that could be uh, produced in, this, in the same factory. Check that out, the robot manufacturing right there. And then all the different components of the car here on the uh, back wall, but check it out again one more time. And then walking around the expo a little bit more, I've come across one more Iranian car right here. Check this one out. This one is the Sapia. The Sapia Shanin. I'm not too sure about the name Shanin, but it looks like a very nice car. They've even got the engine started here. It looks like he's about to drive it out of here, I wonder. They're uh, kind of at the end of the uh, exhibition now, so they're planning to essentially ship all of these goods and parts back. So the, uh, all the guys here kind of interested uh, in the car, but have a look a little bit closer inside. Check that out. Very nice. It's uh, another, basically a sedan car. Uh, very similar to the one that we saw, the Tara, but probably a little bit bigger in terms of the size. Yeah, check it out. I just find it very interesting to uh, see these cars here in Russia. I mean, the Lada is so iconic. And then for an Iranian company to try to come into the Russian market, I think they maybe have picked the right time, have they, with all the other companies basically uh, maybe not sending cars to Russia right now. So looks like a nice car to me. And then a little bit further along in the exhibition here, there's another model of car here as well. They're actually uh, bubble wrapping this to send back. I wonder if they're gonna put it on the airplane tonight. I'm not too sure. It's just basically the shell of the car though, but I wonder what, their, uh, what the excess baggage is for their flight home back to uh, Tehran. But uh, there's all sorts of different Iranian, uh, mostly car parts distributors here. There's a whole kind of alleyway of them here on both sides. And obviously the whole point of this is the business to business connection with Russian dealers. So if they can find a market, then that's fantastic. Now, as I head on out of the expo, I hope this video was kind of interesting. Uh, it's a little bit short and sweet. I didn't focus on really any part of seeing the the main expo. I really wanted to see cars. And I got to see the one car that I wanted to come and see here, this, the Iranian car, the Tara. So as I'm walking out, they're all packing up. A lot of uh, parts, a lot of machinery, a lot of business-to-business uh, -business, uh, companies trying to find avenues to do business in Russia. So what do you think of the Iranian car, the Tara? Let me know in the comments. Uh, what do you think? I mean, I'm sure we're gonna have a bit of a mixed opinion amongst all the uh, viewers and you guys out there. So thanks for coming traveling with Russell here in Moscow, Russia. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, it took me about three hours to find the car. I've literally walked the entire building, probably nearly twice. And I found it right at the end of the day as they're kind of closing up. So yeah, thumbs up if you liked it. Post a comment. If you aren't a subscriber to the channel, subscribe to the channel if you like. Hope to see you as a uh, community member of the channel at some point in the future. Thanks everybody, I'm off on another adventure. Bye.